Welcome into the Boardroom Podcast. I'm Ward 6 Alderman Ben Piper. I'm Chad Wicker from Ward 4. How you doing, Ben? Doing good. I'm enjoying this, man. It's like 80s. Yeah. In the 80s. Dude, if it's like this tomorrow, we're going to be in good shape. We will be in good shape. So in case, for those of y'all who don't know, tomorrow, July 25th, will be the crew of Hernando Tee Off for Teachers Golf Tournament. And, um, you know, have I've been working on that committee, trying to get it organized and, and getting sponsors and all that stuff. Appreciate everybody that... Uh, has come out as a sponsor. I think you know just about everybody on the board and the and the mayor uh, as well are whole sponsors. And there's a lot of local businesses that have jumped in. Skylight Construction is the presenting sponsor on that, so we certainly appreciate them. Uh, but yeah, lots of lots of good people, and even some you know anonymous sponsors that just you know send in donations. Um, you know that's something people don't necessarily recognize, but um, because they want to be anonymous, obviously. Uh, but they uh, ha- are really boosting up probably the the donation levels i bet it'll we might hit thirty thousand dollars this year for local teachers and what's all this go to doesn't it go to teacher grants is that right it does it goes to a teacher grant program that's administered uh through another organization uh so we we earmark it basically for um hernando teachers specifically so they can apply for a teacher grant of up to five hundred dollars so let's say you know you want to read a book i don't know what's what's a book we had to read back in school ethan frome you remember Ethan Frome? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awful book. No, it's it's fine. Uh, so yeah, you want to read that book uh, with your class, and you don't want everybody have to go out and spend fifteen dollars to get yeah. it. You buy it for all your class, so that way everybody can you know enjoy the book you know free of charge. But, sure. Uh, just things like that, and you know we always get you know this is kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit on this whole deal, but um, you know we get cards from the kids you know, thank you cards and all that sort of thing. Right, so it's, it's, right. it's cool to see that. And, um, you know, it's a great, uh, great event. So it should be a good time. Hopefully the rain holds off so we can get it in, but yeah, it should be fun. Uh, but the weather's been good. We had soccer coaches meeting last yeah, night. Yeah. Soccer season's right yeah. around the corner for fall soccer. Everybody's getting geared up for that. Eight, eight, you boys, you're coaching what? Eight, you girls, eight, you girls. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, want scrimmage yeah. though. Scared to scrimmage. It, man, it's scary now. I don't, I don't <laughs> know too much about my team just yet. So I know a few of the, I know a few of the faces, but, it's going to be a uh, whole new world for all of them there. So. Yeah, excited about the season. We we made some improvements there, so you'll see some additional parking li- uh, lights, and then the, the two mm-hmm. pads there by the concession stand will be will be lit now, and mm-hmm. um, he can control them on his phone. So that's what he said last night. So that's pretty cool. And if you haven't, if let's say you maybe you don't have a kid that plays soccer at all, and you haven't been out there in years, go out there and just check it out. You know, just random night during the week. Uh, you know, when kids are practicing over the next few months, if there's if it's a nice night, go out there and just check it out. Because if you haven't been out there, you know, in the last four years, the parking lot's been paved. There's uh, parking lot lights. There's a- additional lighting that's been added. The fields are in much you know better condition, I think, in my opinion, um, than they have been in the past. They've greened up really well. You know, there's new uh, new goals and nets that are out there. Yeah. There's fencing that's been put out there to keep balls from going into the parking lot. You know, so there's a lot of additions that have really elevated the you know aesthetics of the park out there. Yeah, we know parks. I think has been a priority for me. I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think for you as well. And we've committed a lot of resources to that uh, to that facility, and and so we we're proud of it. So I think he said five hundred uh, five hundred and thirty eight kids are playing mm-hmm. soccer this uh, this. Uh, which um, is high for the fall. I mean, for the fall, a for uh, 53 the fall. teams, I think, or 52 teams. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's down a little bit from the, the spring, but, you know, in the spring, Nesbitt First Baptist didn't do their league, sure. so it was a little higher then. And um, so some of those kids, you know, probably peeled off the Nesbitt again. There's probably some more that are jumping into competitive, and then they got some new kids. That yeah, but, you before. know, like, so my son wants to play football, uh, and then you, right. see, you have football at the same ball time ball. frame, fall baseball the same time frame. It's just it's a lot going on. School's starting, so – it's a busy time of year, busy, busy time of year. Um, but yeah, so we let, let's jump into our meeting here. July right. 16th, we had our regular board meeting, uh, you know, paid bills, did all the things, Pledge of Allegiance, prayer, um, paid bills, approved minutes, all those things. Uh, we did have uh, the Kirkendall Park restroom is one of those ones that Kirkendall Park is, um, has been there a long time. That yeah. facility has been there for a very, very long time. That's the original high school football field. Right. And then the uh, you know the concessions the old concession stand has been is being remodeled into a uh, bathroom and and uh, actually while we're sitting here Jared just texted me and said it's not completed yet but will be done in the month of a- August so uh, the bathrooms will be complete. But you, if you drive past it if you get right there where like Ice Plant I guess it's Ice Plant Road and 
Yeah, um, yeah. I know that's right. Ice Plant Road, Ben. It's a funny story. I got my first speeding ticket right there on Ice Plant Road. What happened? I was I was in a hurry, man. I hurry. Well, I'd get that, but what, what, okay. It's so a one-way turned, street. So, so there to... was a police officer at the, over at the, sitting in that little parking lot by the railroad tracks. Uh, gotcha. And I saw him. And I was trying to zip around him, so I was, was turned in right there, and he he pulled me over. And uh, what uh, kind of car were you in? Do you remember? I was in my mother's. Uh, I believe she had a Ford uh, Focus. I believe is what it was back in the day. They were those and are was, known for their and uh, you, you, I don't, do you do you know who Dickie Flynn is? I don't think I know who that so is. So he he was uh, is he related to that. Well, actually, when I first met him, he he was a janitor at our at our middle school, and then he became a police officer. He worked for the Hernando, and he worked for. Um, DeSoto County. Well, he uh, he's the one that pulled me over, gotcha. and and he was known to give quite the um, colorful uh, <laughs> conversation with you, mm-hmm. especially if he knew you. So he he was uh, uh, very animated about me speeding. Um, so, but that's you the first knew, time you I, knew better. You're you're whipping through there, small town Hernando. Just that was what twenty years ago, probably. Mr. Dickey More used a lot that. of four letter words that day. Uh oh, watch out, watch out. Okay. <laughs> But he he you well, know he he uh he uh he passed away I think a year or so ago from cancer so he's, mm. but he was a great guy man so well that's a uh, that's an interesting story that is a a different time in Hernando that's probably twenty five years ago close to it now yeah yeah so that's like probably that. about ninety nine two thousand probably something like that so man I'm getting old dude aren't we all uh, but that being said ice plant road right there there um you probably have seen where the old concession stand was torn down and then uh the new one's gone up there it looked it i thought it was completed just from, from driving past i thought it was pretty much done so yeah. it will be done here pretty soon uh but that has been another park that's kind of gone through some renovations the old bleachers were torn down we've had some trees that were planted by the hernando young women's club uh the track's been worked on a little bit yeah um but there's still some you know obviously there's some work that needs to be done on the on the actual field and some lights and stuff there yeah. in the in the future at some point that, that'll be it'll be done just in time for Haifa practices to start down there so that'll be, that, that'll be perfect that'll be perfect so we uh we also had some good news from a standpoint of health care insurance from the city yeah uh had a decrease um by switching over to, uh, to blue cross blue shield i think it was, we we're in united before yeah, so United I think healthcare we, 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 we've been with uh, uh, Shaz or Chaz and them for a long time. Uh, with uh, uh, and they shot, they decided to. They, I guess they got a, the renewal back from United, and it was a little higher than they expected, so they decided to shop it. And when they shopped it, uh, seemed like they got a pretty good deal from Blue Cross uh, Blue Shield. So I think we're going down a little bit uh, in the premium. I think it's going to save the city. I think Bruce was showing me a hundred and you know, hundred seventy thousand yeah. dollars or something like yeah, that over a, the year. It's a big savings for sure, and so, it also and it, it goes back to a lot of the folks that work for the city um, where you're getting more of your paycheck because you're right, not having to right. pay as much into yeah. your insurance. So yeah. uh, that's a, that's kind of a, it's kind of a raise a little bit in a way. Well, you, you know, Ben, I don't think we've ever really discussed this on the podcast, but that's a, that's a really challenging thing, especially for small cities like Hernando. Uh, the, the health insurance we have to provide is, is typically very expensive to the employee. And mm-hmm. so uh, that's another, um, you know, another, another thing we really have to look at. And so I don't, I don't know if we've ever discussed that on here, but like, um, you know, since we, you know, obviously insurance is basically the pool of people. Hernando's pool is so small, we can't get some of the, some of the more competitive rates that maybe South Haven or DeSoto County or mm-hmm. some of the larger uh, employees can get. So it's it becomes challenging uh, and it's, it can get it very expensive. And when we first took office, I don't. I can't remember the numbers, Ben, but I think it was. It was really almost ridiculous for what a family to have your family on the insurance program, and we've really reduced that over the last three years. It's went down every year, so it does make a big difference for you know for families because in the you know in the public sector when you're working, um, there's very few people that are they can really um, that are making like that six figure you know eighty thousand right, plus right, yeah, yeah you know above the above the average income money most people are kind of in that in that average or below average pay range um when you're working in the public sector um so that being said an insurance you know an insurance improvement of six or eight or ten percent that's a big deal um and we you know i think i know alderman robinson's been working really hard on that and our uh, our insurance providers as well so uh definitely some great news there um but yeah city hernando you're talking about just under 200 employees 
So if you have, you know, just a handful of employees who get really sick, have really catastrophic injuries, whatever it might be, it can drastically change yes, the insurance yes. for everyone else that's in that pool. And, and that's one thing, too. I think we've been, our, our pool have been has been relatively healthy over the last three years. That, that's all helped with that. So there hadn't been any, you know, something, you know, Hernando's so small, so if you maybe get an employee who gets cancer or something like mm-hmm, that, or a very mm-hmm. serious car accident or something, that can really uh, throw off your, your, uh, your, your rates. We, uh, the next thing we had was a the, we approved the lowest and best bid from Feral Paving for the uh, the Mackinac High Springs. It says travel travel circle, but I think we all know it's a roundabout. Uh, the, and and I think that most people that I've talked to have are said, you are you saying roundabouts aren't popular? I don't feel like they are. I feel like it's fifty fifty. It depends on who you talk to. It's it is fifty fifty because there's people that are like oh they have them in Oxford and they work great you know. Mm. Yeah. And then there's people that are like, well, I don't like going to Oxford. I don't, you know, I don't like them, you know, whatever. Um, sure. So you just never know what people are going to say. But <laughs> I, I do think in general, the people that I've talked to that live, you know, south of town, that's kind of in that, you know, if they may, maybe they live in Jefferson States or St. Ives or, you know, one of those neighborhoods down there. They've said, you know, something really needs to happen here because it is kind of a weird, it's a really weird intersection. This is probably the best place to have one. Uh, and, you know, I know uh, Alderman Ross, um has really been consistent in saying that this is an intersection that needs to be dealt with. So, um, you know, there you have it. That one's done. Uh, and it'll get started here very soon. Um, and what I liked about it, Ben, is that uh, it came over, uh, came in under budget. Under so. budget by uh, almost $40,000. So that's definitely some good news uh, for our paving and street budget. And I believe um, I believe Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Frank said that he, he thought this maybe could be done. Uh, mm-hmm. By, by Christmas time, is that what he said? That's what he said, yeah, before so. the end of the year. So, you know, obviously we got to have some – we need some – the we need the warm weather to continue, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah, once it, right. if it gets too cold, then you're not – you know, concrete mm-hmm. and asphalt doesn't really work with cold weather a whole lot, so we're going to have to, you know, deal with that side of it. But uh, from what he was telling us, you know, should be done, you know, by the end of the year, by the end of uh, 2024 here. And – it, I think it's going to be something that will be good for people in that area that have to go home and, um, you know, have to go down, you know, trying to get down to Slocum Road or whatever it may be. It'll be a good, um, good, ins- you know, it'll deal with a lot of the traffic issues there. Uh, we also had a, a approved a bid from Phoenix Fabricators for an elevated tank at uh, by Hilly Road in the, in the Madison Lakes uh, property. It was about $1.1 million, but it is covered by ARPA, the American Recovery Plan Act. Fund. So the city received, you know, we got ma- yeah, we got matching from what we got. The state matched it too. So the city received about three point seven million dollars. Uh, you know, a good portion of that's going to be matched by the state legislature to do some of these projects. Um, this one will improve water capacity on the eastern part of the city, where there is a lot of growth going on. You got a new high school going in. You've got new development going in. Um, the high school is going to be on Nesbit Water. But there's other there's other development coming to that side of the city that will need uh, water capacity. And if you live on that side of the city, you've probably seen where there's development going on in the county, um, just outside yeah. the city limits. Yeah. They are still on a city water uh, system, uh, so working to get those get, get those things uh, improved. Yeah, the city the city made a great a great, a great decision years ago to buy Northwest Mississippi Utilities there. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those people there are on the what is now city water, what used to be Northwest uh, Mississippi Utilities. So, um. We did have some, uh, the Montclair Phase 7, this is the next thing, Montclair Phase 7 final plat approval. All this basically is is, is just saying it's time to move forward with the, the final phase of, I believe it's the final phase of Montclair. Yeah, I don't think there's yeah. any more after this one. Ben, have we ever talked about what exactly a, the, the final plat approval is? I think we've we've kind of glazed over it, but not really, not really. Well, that's, that's just the, the, us voting on something, saying that the final plat is what the original preliminary plat it matches, right? So it's mm-hmm. it's it's what they they built, what they said they were going to build. They put the roads in the way they were going to put them. They lotted, the, they platted the lots correctly, and so it's just you know we're really dependent on our staff to go out there and make sure it's right, and then tell us it's right, and that's what the reports would get say. So it's really a you know a whole bunch of nothing, but we have to vote on it to make sure it's platted correctly. And when you say platted, we're, we're talking about that the lot sizes are what, right? The lot correct. sizes, you know, there's gr- the green space is the right, 
the right space. All, you know, we require so much green space for so many houses, and, and the roads are built right, sidewalks, all that stuff is there. Um, it's a lot of work by our planning department, our city you know, engineer. Fire hydrants are put in, mailboxes in the correct place. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, or a couple of years ago, they went to this, um, you've probably seen them now, Ben, the, the communal mailbox kind of at the front of the subdivision, and not one at each at each house. The post offices went to that, so making sure that's there, things like that. And then the last thing we had on our, uh, of note that we had on our agenda uh, is annexation. That's usually like a really controversial topic, annexation. Are you saying Hernando's annex in Bridgeton? Or annex. No, <laughs> I did not say that. Huh? No, sir. Are you breaking news? Not breaking news. Uh, annexation of the Civic Center ball field property and an energy parcel uh, adjacent to Scott Meadows. So, you know, not news here. The city bought the Civic Center ball fields from uh, the Hernando Saddle Club, the Rotary, and the Optimus Club. That's right. Um, you know, closed on that deal about a year ago now. Yeah, we paid. A, I think we paid two payments to about them. a year ago. So the, the payments are flowing. Uh, it's our the city's property now, uh, but that property had not been annexed in yet. Um, you know, certainly we want to we want to make sure if there's you know any kind of emergency out there, if we need police presence, you know, whatever it is that the city of Hernando can handle that since it is. Our property not having to rely on other government agencies and necessarily do that uh, and just take care of business out there the annexation does not include the Hernando Saddle Club's um, property that's kind of on the back side of the of the ball fields there right. um, and then the energy parcel uh, that we mentioned this next to Scott Meadows is a, a massive substation that's been built to help with the electrical infrastructure for the city as it continues to grow um, it was out in the county, but by annexing that, that parcel in, uh, essentially what it allows is for about $100,000 a year in additional property taxes for energy to pay to the city of Hernando. Um, so that's a good thing for the, the taxpayers of uh, Hernando. Yeah. Uh, if you're a residential taxpayer, that means that's $100,000 from a, a, a large cor corporation that that does a lot in our city that, um, you know, they have to come in and, and clear trees and do work and do uh, and try to keep us all up and running. Um, it puts money back into our community so that we're able to, you know, add a police officer or pave more streets or, you know, add a paramedic or whatever it may be. Sure. That 100000 uh would essentially go to pay, you know, an additional salary or help pay for, uh, you know, pay for some infrastructure. And what, it, you know, one of the things we spoke about at the meeting, uh, Ben, is that, um, the baseball fields being in the county and they are now our, our city has our police department has no jurisdiction there that's right so if there's an umpire fighting with a you know a parent or, or you know two parents getting the does that argument, happen that's always the example man, of people you know I, I, I umpired out there when from about 15 16 17 years old and yeah I've seen some things you wouldn't believe um, wow okay. so um, but at that time I umpired with a guy who worked for the sheriff's department so we are always quick to get the sheriff's department out there if we need them Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, I, and I don't know if it's like it used to be, but it, that was, you know, like making the all-star team was pretty, you know, that was pretty competitive. And, you know, the, yeah. you know, there was always a kid that maybe didn't make it. It was pretty close. And so parents would get mad about that. And so in, anyway, it's, it's um, you know, like when we have our fireworks show out there, um, the police department's out there directing traffic in the county, basically. And so now, gotcha. um, you know, now um, they have jurisdiction out there. They can handle all that stuff. I know the, the the chief of police had sent us a letter, you know, basically expressing that concern. And then, you know, also people thought that was the city anyway. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in both these properties, I think people just assumed that was that was the city limits anyway. So, um, now we can sell it now, Ben, and then you know, right? <laughs> I, I, I huh? don't I don't necessarily want to do that. <laughs> We've I'm got you know right now we got you know almost 125 continuous acre, acres between 51 and mm -hmm. Robertson Gen Road that um, you know is going to be a, uh, a master plan park complex that will be, uh, you know, generational use out there. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take, um, you know, some patience from some people to sure. make that happen because sure. it's it, it will be expensive to rehab um, these parks and make them, you know, make them to the standard that I think everybody wants because I think, you know, for, for most people, they're going to uh, – they may be going to South Haven to play ball or they may be going to Sinatobio sure. to play ball. Sure. Maybe they're on a travel team, you know, whatever else, and they see some of these other complexes. And you know, ours still needs some work. Uh, it's pretty pretty well, obvious. I, I, I'm not sure. Probably in the spring, we'll we'll, we'll break ground on on the baseball uh, complex we're building out there. Right. Uh, that's going to be a game changer when that's completed. That's going to be a really nice uh, uh, facility. 
Um, but we, we, you know, we, we at a, a, a city our size, we always have the financial challenge of, you know, supporting our parks and rec department, but also maintaining our police department, our fire department, our you know, mm-hmm. um, public works. So it's it's some challenges, and, and we don't nearly, we, we don't have the amount of money I think we would all like to spend uh, out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think we've done a really good job over the last three or four years, and we're going to continue to invest in those. And I think people have seen that the soccer fields, I think the baseball fields will see that over the next you know. 18 months, two years, you'll see that develop out there. We're also working on the grant for the um, disc golf course and all that out there. That's going to be really nice, mm-hmm. finishing that road through there. And then, uh, you know, I think maybe at some point we'll look at some tennis courts or some basketball courts out there. Um, we'll just keep kind of piecemealing that plan we developed a couple of years ago. So It definitely takes a lot of time, and, you know, it's certainly something that um, – you know, I know there's probably people out there who say, hey, but, you know, I don't use any of these things. You know, uh, <laughs> That's right. you know I use, but I use roads. So you all need to take care of the roads. Yeah. You all need to take care yeah. of water sewer. And so it's, it's definitely a balancing act. And, um, you know, as we're going through this next, um, you know, month or so, we'll probably be talking more in depth about the budget uh, for yeah. fiscal year 25. Yeah. Uh, we have had uh, some workshops uh, a little bit. Um, you know, between department heads and the mayor, um, I think some of the aldermen have, you know, met with the mayor to express, um, you know, what their needs are and their wards so that they can, um, so that he can be working through the budget process. Uh, but we'll probably have most likely early August, we'll have some of those early projections of numbers for where we'll be in the budget process. Yeah, didn't, I think Chip said he was going to have a preliminary budget at the August meeting. Yeah. I think so. And it has to be approved by September 15th by state law. Sure. I sure. would think our first September meeting would be when we would most likely approve the budget. We have had, we have set a public hearing um, on the tax levy. On the tax levy, which is not going to increase. There's going to be no millage increase. Uh, you know, this board has been very, you know, conservative from that standpoint to not have any millage increases uh, during this term. Um, and so that's a, you know, that's a positive thing for everybody that lives in in our city. And it's because we've had some business growth, we've had some residential growth. Um, I, th- I think the biggest positive. thing we're waking, or, waiting on now is is the, is the report we get from the tax assessor's office, that, you know, right? Detailing exactly how much, you know, whenever if everybody pays their taxes, how much that would be to kind of set our budget based off that. So, and um, what that looks like is, you know, sometimes it, you know Jeff Fitch is our our yes. guy there at the county tax assessor, uh, and he may come in and say, look, and it's going to last year it was, you know, a two percent increase this year to be a three percent increase, and you know it's right. not, it's always a single digit number. It's very rarely a yeah. big jump. Um, but when you're talking about the numbers that we're talking about, you know, 3% could be somewhere where that, you know, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars, mm-hmm. um, to the know, city, to the, to the, the city, to the not, city. not to the, not to the homeowner, <laughs> right. A couple hundred thousand dollars to the city, maybe, you know, maybe for, $15 for to the homeowner. But. Yeah. For budgeting purposes. Right. Well, no, not even to the homeowner, yeah. not even to the homeowner. It's something where it just means that the, the growth that's happened in our city or development that's happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, talking about yeah, – I thought yeah. you were talking about reassessing the value. No, 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 no. I don't think there's going to be anything like that. Um, I think it's just going to be just from the growth that's – Yeah, yeah, so, so what he's talking about is like something was maybe an agricultural lot was developed into a subdivision where mm-hmm. they're going to pay a higher rate of taxes or if something was an agricultural lot and was developed into a commercial lot, they pay a higher rate of taxes. So um, That's right. These fi- I mean, these final plat approvals, like when the final yeah, plat approvals exactly, go through, exactly. a higher tax rate's applied to all those, to right. all those lots. So they all play point. residential tax uh, instead of a – that probably was agricultural or whatever before, and so they play a lot low, a lot smaller tax rate. That's it. So. Well, we'll have more on the budget as we continue to go through it. Uh, but that's that's it for the meeting as far as that goes uh, on Tuesday. Um, what else is going on here in the city? We've got a scavenger hunt that's coming up. Scavenger hunt. School August. starts August 1st. No, That's next, it. Th- next Thursday, we've talked about the there's, Tee Off for Teachers Golf Tournament. That's there's pool up. parties and all kinds of stuff. If, you, if yeah. you're not on social media, there's I all kinds of pool parties. The kids I believe are, the class of 2030 is having something Saturday. Yeah, there so. you go. Um, so check those out. Uh, look for those folks online on uh, on Facebook. Search for it. Search for the back-to-school pool parties. There's some going on there. The, uh, the school starts back August the 1st. I know the teachers are going to be back, I think, yeah. next week getting right after it. Classrooms. Um, getting started, getting their classrooms ready. Uh, there is a the fifteenth annual citywide scavenger hunt is on Saturday, August seventeenth. It starts that morning. I think it's from eight to twelve. Yeah, that's a pretty there, cool event. There's some prizes and whatnot involved, and I guess they'll say like, you know, go to the street where Chad Wicker got a speeding ticket. And everybody goes to <laughs> Ice Plant Road or whatever it is. If it's that detailed, nobody's gonna get that one right. No, I, don't I, don't, I wouldn't think that so. One's, that I'm, one's gonna I'm, be I'm, that I'm, one's gonna be rough. I don't think I'm that popular, Ben. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we'll get, uh, you know, there'll be a, it, it'll be a lot of fun out there. And we, um, you know, certainly had, I think we had a city team, I think this year, I think, uh, Alderman Lynch and some yeah, other folks I think I'm going to participate. I think if I can, but y'all are not going to take any prizes if y'all win. I, I, I didn't I agree with that. No. I didn't I, agree that's with what, that. That's what she had said. <laughs> that's when kidding. I said I was out. I need some <laughs> well, prizes. I think her family won it one year. I think it's a thousand bucks they pay the winner. Oh, wow. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, wow. I think it's, it's some serious money. Um, well, anybody so, that's been around Hernando for, for a little while, uh, you know, especially if you're a his, history buff or something like that, you want to you want to go check that out because there's probably going to be some uh, some good fun had there out there with the sure. with the scavenger mm-hmm. hunt. So that should be a good time. Uh, football will be starting up. I think there's a meet the Tigers coming up. Um, mm-hmm. and I think the first football game is probably it's the 16th. I yeah. think they got a jamboree with uh, Lake Cormorant. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, and then the you know football season will get started. Uh, I know Coach sure. McCann is excited about that. Uh, he and I yeah. have been talking a little bit. They've had some really good, uh, talented kids that are, that are coming back from last year's team. Um, yeah, I think it could be a it's going to be a tough season. They've got some tough games. They got to come you down. What, the, uh, the class of twenty twenty four has a has a, a lot um, to live up to. I mean, the twenty three class really. I mean, they won the what soccer mm-hmm. state championship runner from baseball. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they there's uh, a lot going on. I mean, it's it's a so it's, it's going to be tough, but. I know that um, there's a big there's a big one coming a big road trip real early on in the season. They come down to Cenotopia, Hernando at Cenotopia um, oh. in the, this this football season. I just stay and at that, work and that that look over a, the fence. There you go. That it, but it's going to be that is always a tough one. I think Cenotopia last year had, got the best of them, so Hernando's got to try to return to, yeah. Yeah, return okay. the favor here. Yeah, potentially. that's going to be a good game. But I think the season opener season opener is Tunica Rosa Fort. Sure, I believe it's on the twenty third. I will double check that. I got to get my. I got to get my. Uh, we get a schedule out. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a paper schedule. Somebody texted me a paper schedule. You know, we hadn't done um, a guest in a while. Yeah, maybe maybe I ought to get McCain on he here. He would. He would happily do. I'm sure he would jump on here. We got to get him before the season starts. Yeah, though, that's what I'm once saying. season starts, yeah. he's wide open. Uh, well, we'll try to get Coach McCain for you next time. Uh, we have a we have a, a recording here. Mm-hmm. We've got another meeting coming up August the sixth. Yeah. And then August the 20th, we'll be in full budget mode by then. Sure. So we'll talk more budget. We'll talk more Hernando next time on the Boardroom Podcast. But for now, I'm Ward 6 Alderman Ben Piper. I'm Ward 4 Alderman Chad Wicker. Y'all have a great weekend. Yeah.